Hey there, I'm Cruzen, and this video will teach you an easy and efficient way to build a VTOL. If you don't already know, VTOL stands for Vertical Takeoff and Landing, and these designs are amazing for making your planes more versatile and fun to fly. If you haven't tried making a VTOL before, then this is the place for you. Even if you have made VTOLs before, you might still learn a trick or two to use for your future designs, so stick around. There are three major types of VTOL designs. They are wing mounted, beam mounted, and belly mounted. Before I go too deep into that, I'll just give you an easy go-to design that will get you started with VTOLs. The design that I'll teach you here first is the beam mounted version. It's arguably one of the best ways to mount your VTOL engines, as balancing those engines with your center of mass is a breeze, and troubleshooting the design is easy as well. Plus it looks cool, so that's usually what ends up deciding these things for me in the end. The basic parts you need for this design are a cubic strut, an I-beam, a basic jet engine, and a reaction wheel. The reaction wheel is optional, but I highly recommend it for reasons which I'll go over later on. Take the cubic strut and place it on the top of your fuselage. I recommend having part snapping turned on and symmetry needs to be turned off. Don't worry about centering this over your center of mass just yet. We'll do that once the assembly is finished. Next, take either the small or long I-beam and place it on the side of the strut. Keep symmetry turned off as we'll be building one side first then turning symmetry on later to finish it off. Placing the beam can be tricky with part snap turned on so feel free to toggle that off for now. Don't worry about centering it, as we'll be placing it again later on anyways. Now grab another cubic strut, place it on the end of the beam, and press the W key once. This will make the bottom of the strut point upwards. If you have part snap turned on, then you'll need to press the Q key instead, and it'll do the same thing. So at this point, you'll have two green bubbles on the cubic strut visible. This means you've got two mounting points to use. Go ahead and grab your basic gen engine now. It'll be facing the wrong direction right off the bat, but if you press the S key, it'll rotate just the way we want it. I know, I know, it's upside down, but we'll fix that in a second. This next step is optional, but I'm going to add in a reaction wheel. As I said earlier, I highly recommend you do this. It adds a ton of stability to your craft and gives you added yaw authority, which is invaluable while flying a VTOL. It also helps offset fuel drain problems you'll encounter at the end of your flights when fuel levels are low. Now that this side is built, go ahead and grab the I-beam, and turn symmetry on and place the I-beam back onto the strut. Take some time to center it onto the side of the strut really well. The reason we waited to turn symmetry on is that building things like this with symmetry enabled uh, can be a huge pain, and this helps to resolve that issue. Now toggle on your center of mass indicator. This is where you'll get to see the usefulness of using a single mounting point. Orient the camera so that you're looking straight down onto the plane, preferably directly over the center of mass bubble. Go ahead and grab the central cubic strut, make sure symmetry is off and part snap is on. Move the strut so it is directly over the center of mass as best you can. Feel free to set it down and pan the camera around to check things out. If you're satisfied with the placement, grab the strut again and we'll rotate it so the jets are facing the right way now. Press the W or S key two times and you'll flip the whole assembly over. The strut clips inside the fuselage and makes things look much nicer. If you're opposed to clipping, you can just as easily do this design without mounting the jets upside down, and skip this last step. And there you go! An easily designed and balanced VTOL building technique. Before you hit the runway, don't forget to add fuel lines. I seem to forget every time, so don't worry if you do as well. <laughs> it can also be useful to set up action groups to toggle these engines on and off as well. To create action groups, click the gears icon on the top of your screen. I could probably do an entire video covering the usefulness of action groups, and... but I might do that another time. For now, click on Custom Action Group 1, or Custom Group 1. This is tied in with a 1 key in your keyboard. Personally, I like to make this toggle my horizontal jet, so click that jet on your plane and then click Toggle Engine on the new menu that pops up. Do this again for Custom Group 2, except with your VTOL engines. And that's it! Don't forget to save your design, then hit the runway and give it a whirl. There are plenty of other ways you can mount VTOL engines onto your planes. Belly mounting and wing mounting are the other major categories, and they have their advantages and disadvantages. Check out my latest video which shows me building those types of designs. As for actually mounting the engines, experiment with different parts for attaching the jet. You don't have to be limited to the cubic strut, as there are a ton of other parts that work just as well. If you're looking for more inspiration for designing some cool VTOLs, I'd recommend watching a video that Veos made a while back. Um, he walked you through a very similar process for making a really cool design. Click the link on the screen to check out that video. Now building a VTOL is probably the easiest part to learn when it comes to taming these beasts. The hardest part is actually flying and landing them, and I would cover that now, but I want to keep these videos short. Stay tuned as the video covering how to actually fly these things will be out in the next couple of days. I have to decide if releasing a video on Thanksgiving is a good idea or not. <laughs>
Good luck with your designs and have fun building VTOLs.